Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Miller. Um, hi, good afternoon. I hope you all had a wonderful lunch um, and are loaded up on carbs so that you crash halfway through this presentation. All right, um, and uh, okay, can we get to slide one? I hope we sorted out the slide issue. I actually brought slides yes, here. Yes, I did. Um, and, uh, and also, by the way, you're going to have to bear with me a little bit because I'm staring directly into extremely bright lights. Um, and the stage is a little wobbly, but I'm not going to complain. Um, all right, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, the future of sort of like standardizing the way we share information. Um, some approaches that are already being tried by certain organizations, um, some of them in this room, including my own, to try to advance past the limitations of the traffic light protocol. And, uh, and also, you know, how we can possibly make an even better future if we work together and collaborate. So at the end of this presentation, I'm actually going to have a call to action for everybody in this room to come to the birds of a feather session that immediately follows. Um, all right. Can we get the slides up, please? Oh, all right, it's the agenda. I can't see my own slides. We're going to have to wing this a little bit. Um, so as you can see, we're um, going to go through several approaches that have already been tried. And uh, uh, let's go ahead and get to the next slide, please. So a very brief history of how we got here and why I'm standing up here speaking to you. Uh, let's go all the way back to the beginning of the story, which is um, when I worked at US CERT, the predecessor to CISA, uh, we used to share everything with a marking on the top of it that said unclassified for official use only, which actually has legal implications in the United States because for official use only means that it's for government business. And we have a mission to protect critical infrastructure in the United States. So we would try to share this with private sector partners and we'd mark it for an official use only and then it would stop dead in its tracks and never go anywhere and nobody would use it to protect themselves and it was just a waste of everybody's time. So after a couple of years of friction created by this, um, some of our critical infrastructure partners who are already multinationals and therefore global uh, said, why don't you try this thing that the Brits have been doing for years called traffic light protocol and uh, we were like, what's that? And why would we use it? And then they said, Tom Alar, you're in charge. You make this happen. So, because I guess I didn't look busy enough at the time. And uh, so I got tasked with that particular special project of implementing the traffic light protocol of US CERT. I completely screwed it up and made my own definitions instead of using the British ones. And then um, I realized other CERTs were having the same problem. So then in 2015, we went to, uh, I brought it to uh, the first conference in Seoul, I think, or was 2016 Seoul? Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, brought it to the first conference and said, we need to develop a special interest group devoted to one standard version of traffic light protocol to rule them all. And we did that successfully, except for the part where we needed a 2.0 version, which we then worked on for a number of years. And then we brought that back and put it in place uh, um, last year at the Dublin conference, we announced it. Um, and if you noticed, uh, it became the butt of a little bit of a joke, which I also have on my ribbon, uh, ribbon list, the TLP unclear stickers that you can get at the registration desk because we changed TLP white to TLP clear for reasons that I hope are obvious to you. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's more or less the story. That's where we stand today with traffic light protocol and why I'm speaking to you about it. Next slide. Oh. oh, I have the remote. I don't know how anything works. I'm a technologist. Um, so identified limitations of TLP is basically like it only deals with sharing. We have this question all the time in the SIG um, for TLP, which is that people come to us and ask about like, what does that mean about encryption? We say that doesn't answer the questions about encryption, that's on you. Well, well what does it mean about, you know, like, um, actions. What kind of actions can I take with it? Can I do active countermeasures? Can I only do passive monitoring? Can I take this IOC and throw it into Google? Is that going to be okay? And we're like, it doesn't answer that question. That's on you. And, uh, and these are challenges that keep coming up. And, uh, 
Um, and there's also some licensing concerns. There's other things that have popped up from time to time, but the most common ones are actions and handling in terms of encryption and other things. And uh, these are some other approaches that people are trying to use to solve the problem. ACS is the access control specification. And if you can't tell by the shape of this PowerPoint slide and the image on it, this is a US government specific um, uh, approach. It's a giant PDF. It's a very intensive specification and it pretty much relies on you already having strong policies in place and legal, legal, um, legal authority, legal weight to those policies. I don't personally recommend anybody else in this room do this. It's just something we have to try. However, it does in its own sort of like possibly overweight approach um, uh, give you answers to what kinds of actions can be taken, who can it be shared with, and how to handle the information, and et cetera, et cetera. So that's ACS. I wanted to share that just as an example of something that is being tried. Um, the Permissible Actions Protocol, PAP. Um, this is already in use by some certs around the world. Um, and it uses this. It, so this is actually a... Uh, one of the problems I have with PAP. Can anybody guess what it is? It's the same colors. It's the exact same colors. This is not great user experience design um, because I think this could be very confusing to someone who sees PAP for the first time and then equates the TLP colors with the PAP colors. Also, one other possible issue with it is that it's trying to answer, each of these colors is trying to answer two questions at once, handling and action at the same time. I worry that that's maybe a little bit overweight and maybe a little bit too much to keep in your head while you're trying to process and act on information, especially under the time constraints we often are in when we're trying to share stuff far and wide to protect networks in a matter of hours. So I think this is a great first, I think this is a great effort. I really like the ideas that are in it. I don't think it's necessarily the, the best design that it can be. I think it has potential though. And then there's IEP, which is created by a first SIG um, a few years back. IEP, um, IEP answers all of the questions and it does them in very discrete granular ways. So on that front, it's actually one of the better designed um, options. It does, however, suffer from automation-itis, which is my name for let's JSON everything, right? It's not, it's like, it's like I said up there, it's like uh, technically a human with enough time on their hands could like go through and like read all the references and check it out and like be like, yep, 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 yep. I get everything in this JSON blob. But that's not, again, that is somewhat suboptimal for the pace at which we operate. Um, also, that's gonna be really ugly if, ugly if I have to stick that on top of every PDF that we're gonna publish out of CISA. Um, and I, we have to admit to ourselves as a community, we're not gonna get out of the business of publishing PDFs, right? JSON, everything is great for IOCs. It can be great for subsets of incident reporting. Um, it can be great for a lot of things, but it's not gonna get us out of the business of pushing around guidance and other documentation and other things that, uh, that really need to ride as a document rather than a blob. Um, and where do we need to go? Eh. I think, we need, I think we need granular, discrete answers to the questions that keep popping up about action and handling. I think we need them to be very ergonomic. I think they need to be well designed for human readability first and machine processability second, because we can teach, we, we have enough brain power in this room alone to teach the machines to interpret the human readable content appropriately. I think that's a solvable problem. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I, I do, let's see. And we need, and, and the handling action and sharing, we need, we need to address all of them sort of comprehensively. I think I've already said that. Um, this, these are some examples of sort of like use cases or challenges. Um, challenges are not the same as problems, but these are challenges that we need to overcome uh, in order to make a new specification or new standard or new set of standards as best as it can possibly be. And I'm not gonna read the slide to you. you can, I can see everybody's head is already doing that, so. Um, 
Lastly, uh, sharing outside, so there's a lot of words on this slide. That is because this is my editorializing about this particular problem after years and years and years and years and years of helping implement TLP at my own organization and coaching other organizations on how to implement TLP for themselves. Um, I, believe, I am a firm believer um, in this day and age that the traffic light protocol label or designation is best left to be slapped on the document when it's leaving the house, when it's leaving the organization. Don't put TLP amber on something in a draft form. Um, don't put TLP red on anything in a draft form because then people get really confused. Um, use that when you're ready to share outside of your own organization. Inside of your own organization, you need policies that have some, that some, have some weight to them. You need to have uh, you know, ways of handling drafts and you need to account for the whatever in your jurisdiction amounts to a sunshine law, Freedom Information Act, um, things of that nature. So if for sensitive information inside of your own organization, I highly recommend developing your own policy. Use TLP for sharing with others. And uh, conclusions. Use TLP. Who doesn't use TLP in this room? Is there anybody in this room who's not currently using TLP when they share with others? Excellent. Um, is anybody willing to admit that they use IEP or PAP right now? All right, I see a couple. All right, so not the broadest adoption, just a handful of hands in the room, but if it's working for you and your constituency, I totally encourage you to continue doing that, refining your processes and seeing how broad adoption we can get with those. In the meantime, though, my main call to action, of course, is to join us for the birds of a feather and ask really hard questions of me while I'm up here. Um, how are we doing on time? I got plenty, don't I? All right, I went through this pretty fast because um, I really hate reading slides to people. Um, I hope this has been at least a great, uh, some great food for thought and a discussion starter. Um, and thank you very much for your time. It's time for questions. Thank you. Hi there, uh, Ted Normanton, long-time listener, long listener, first time caller. Uh, you talked about one of the problems being uh, most information is shared via PDF and as opposed to sharing metadata, et cetera. Um, as one of my side hobbies, hobbies is photography, we use XF files to put a lot of metadata in. Those can be attached to PDF files. Could IEP be used as a way of putting XF onto PDFs since most of us are dealing with electronic versions of PDFs anyways. And that's a way to go and, and digest that information rather than try to print it all at the top of the, uh, the PDF. That can, okay, if I'm understanding you correctly, this would be approach, this would be an approach to use if the machine can interpret that data before the human sees it. How is the human going to know what the IEP stuff says? No, you can, well, I mean, there are, there are tools out there for reading EXIF data. So if you've got the, the file there, you might be able to have a way of sharing a lot of information. And you can put the key components into the document and use an EXIF reader to try to go and so, show what the information is that's, that's of interest to you. Or we could develop some tools. Um, I think, again, I'll go back to one of my issues, which is that sort of like, the granularity, I th so I, I have concerns about too much granularity as well. One of the things about TLP that, is, um, that makes it so simple and so readily adopted by everybody is that it's, it's got only four things. It only answers one question. It does that in relatively discrete but not perfectly discrete fashion. IEP is very can be very granular and discrete. So how granular is too granular for a human to actually like understand in a timely fashion and then keep that in their head while they're working? Does that make sense? Yeah, but it could also be used by machines for automated sharing of, of PDFs or other types of files. Well, 
because we push a lot of, in our case, we do a lot of automation. We're trying to get away from humans actually handling the material as much as possible. I have a bias towards humans because that's the American way. Um, but the, uh, no, seriously though, we have, we have such a diverse set of constituents with so many different maturity levels of um, technology that we have a lot of concerns around automation with our different partners. We obviously have certain sectors of critical infrastructure and certain sizes of critical infrastructure partners that have no problem implementing automation and wish we would get there faster. We also have lots and lots of uh, folks that we're still trying to coach up on TLP too um, because they barely have a cybersecurity program yet they provide essential services to thousands of Americans, right? So I have to account for a broad, a, a broad um, and diverse population of different maturity levels, different automation uh, capabilities, and our own you know, capacity for automation at my agency, as big as we are. So that's, I, I'm just, that's just my way of explaining my bias. Yes, sir. Cool. Thanks very much. Um, I'm Keir from the NCSC in the UK. So you spoke about the initial creation of TLP, which was by the um, Centre for Protection of National Infrastructure in the UK, now NPSA, the National <clears throat> Protective Security Agency. And when it was set up, it was supposed to be a bit of a catch-all for all types of information. Now, going to your kind of human-readable point, in the cybersecurity community, especially with TLP, but especially IEP and PAP, a lot of that focuses on what you're allowed to do, technically speaking. So from, I guess, a network defense level. But increasingly, we are having to share information both with other parts of our government and kind of quasi-governmental organizations, NGOs, civil society organizations, etc., who are focusing on taking that information and turning it into something at a more strategic level which impacts the overarching cybersecurity landscape rather than what you can do on a particular network. And I sort of wanted to ask you and ask the room, should we be considering those less technical actions and permitted actions within some of the definitions as well? So it might be you are able to allow this for the generation of policy, for instance, or other kind of performative or informative actions as opposed to just active blocking, non-active blocking, et cetera. Um, I really like this question. I think it's some, in some case, there's, hmm, some of it might be a, in a matter of phrasing, um, and, and definitions, like, right, obviously, like, most of us who know TLP by now, like the back of our hand, um, sorry for the idiomatic phrase that is almost meaningless, but, um, most of us who have, gotten really well practiced in TLP, know the color designations cold, and we barely have to look at the definitions, but the definitions are obviously crucial. If we want to start sharing with different types of communities, um, and the different, you know, especially people who are not just network defenders, then it comes down to coaching them up on clear definitions of what we mean when we say things like active countermeasures or things of that nature. So there is a possibility to maybe answer some of what you're saying that way. And I'm, I, this is all off the top of my head, so pardon me if this is not the clearest cut answer you've ever heard. Um, but the other thing that, I mean, I think the other, um, we have some experience with this as well, um, but haven't thought about it from the action perspective. We are starting to see more and more people in the physical security side also start to use traffic light protocol. And we have started seeing people in our, um, in the Department of State um, are looking to learn more about traffic light protocol when they interact with their host country interlocutors. Um, so I think it's a really interesting question. I think it's worth di digging a lot deeper into it, and I hope we can uh, address some, some of it a little bit more in the Birds of a Feather session. Uh, because it all, I, I think what you're really coming down to is like, it's all about like how, how much of your hand can you show, mm -hmm. right? In, in taking action or perform any other act of performativity um, that could take place. Yeah, certainly, thanks very much. Um, actually, just to add a bit of a use case for IEP where we've mangled it slightly. So we use the um, 
sort of the top line of the permitted action set, so to speak, to kind of guide policy counterparts and government as to how much they can look to do with a piece of information that's provided from kind of a live incident, if that makes sense. So whether they can kind of stop going out and consulting on information included, whether they can reference that to kind of elected officials or not, and those kind of bits and pieces. And it's been quite useful in certain cases to set those parameters. But yeah, definitely interested to see where this conversation kind of goes. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Tom. Dave Dugal, Juniper Networks. Uh, I have two simple questions. Uh, the, the title of the presentation is UMQ, and I may have missed it, but what does UMQ stand for? What comes after TLP? Oh, clever. Yeah. Sort of like SSVC. Yeah, T Ted liked that title. Okay. Yeah. you you got to please everyone. And, and then the next is sort of a plea. You're not going to change the colors again, are you? From no. white to clear? Okay. Cause we we are going to add purple and blue, though. Oh. Well, that's in 4 one then. Okay. Thank you. Any more? Any more questions? Come on. You have 20 minutes. Do, do you want to tell us? Do y'all really want uh, another coffee break so early? Or is the presentation so good, like it was just like so clear cut, you can't wait to get to this birds of a feather session? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.